full frame is a term that gets thrown around a lot in the camera world these days. And everyone always says, go full frame because you're gonna get better imagery, better low light performance and dynamic range. However, fast forward to 2019 and sensor technology has gotten a very long way. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna pitch two cameras, the Sony a7 III for full frame and the Sony a6500 that will represent APS-C and really compare both of them to see if there really is a big difference in full frame imagery. Let's go. So what is the difference between full frame and APS-C size sensors? It's literally the description of the physical size of the sensor. So with full frame, it is reminiscent and basically identical to the traditional 35mm format, which is 36 by 24 millimeters. Whereas the APS-C is 2.5 times smaller with a 22 by 15 centimeter area. We chose both of these cameras today to test them because they're both 24 megapixels which means that the actual pixel density and size is significantly different between both sensors. On the full frame, you'll have larger pixels as opposed to APS-C where you'll have smaller pixels. So it'll be interesting to see how both of these fare out in our test coming up. So right now for our tests, we've got the Sony Zeiss 35mm and we're gonna take two sets of photos. So we're gonna do uh, one on the a6500 and one on the a7 III, just so you can see the difference in terms of focal length difference in field of view. So our first test today is to do with focal distance. The physical size of the sensor affects the field of view of each lens. Since the physical size of APS-C size sensors are smaller, the field of view is also narrower. Generally, the crop factor is around 1.5 times. So for example, like today, if you're shooting a focal length of 35 mil on the Sony a6500 or on an APS-C size sensor, it will be equivalent to approximately 50 mil in full frame format. So when using lenses on your APS-C size sensor, make sure to compensate for the difference in field of view if you are looking to shoot wider or even looking to shoot telephoto as well. So just running off focal distance, one of the biggest reasons a lot of portrait photographers tend to stick to full frame cameras is because of the shallower depth of field and basically better looking bokeh that you get out of the camera. And this is for one single reason, in the sense that to shoot a portrait or basically any subject, you need to get physically closer to your subject to actually shoot. Whereas with an APS-C size sensor, because of the crop factor, the shooter has to stand a bit further back from the subject, which means that on a full frame image, the actual separation from the background is a lot more dramatic and you'll see it in a moment. Comparing the two images, you can see that our full frame shot has a difference in depth of field. For this test, we use the same lens on both cameras. And for the a6500, we pulled the camera back to replicate similar framing shot from the a7 III. The separation from the background is a bit more prominent on the a7 III. Although the bokeh doesn't look too bad on the a6500, there is a clear difference between the two. So dynamic range is a big reason why a lot of people go full frame. Due to its larger pixel density, you can get away with a larger range of adjustments in color, brightness, shadows, midtones, as well as highlights. What we've done is we've taken these two cameras and shot at both similar shots in RAW just to see how they fare out in post. Comparing the two RAW files, we shot two photos, overexposed by two stops and underexposed by two stops. We then simply increased the brightness of both shots and attempted to recover the shadows. And with the overexposed photo, we tried to turn the brightness down and attempt to recover the highlights. With the full frame sensor, there was a lot more flexibility in the sliders. In saying that, the A6500 still had a bit of data as well to work with to achieve a pretty decent looking photo. However, recovering highlights in the A6500 or even pulling from the shadows, you can definitely see noise come through. And this is where we're gonna talk about the noise performance of both cameras. Full frame cameras generally have better ISO performance, which is seen in the Sony A7. 
Due to the larger individual pixels, they can capture more light which results in less noise. To test this, we did an ISO test with both cameras with no post-production or in-camera noise reduction. Have a look closely at each photo and notice that the photos from the A7 do come out a lot cleaner. Compare that to the A6500 where you do get to see noise come through at about ISO 3200 so we don't advise bumping it past through that. In saying that though, sensor technology has evolved a lot over the years, especially with Sony and the APS-C sensor does hold up to a lot of full frame sensors in 2019. So is full frame worth it? Now through our testing, it might look like the full frame comes out with a lot more advantages than shooting APS-C. However, don't disregard the APS-C size sensors as it does have a lot of benefits and a type of photographer that it can suit. For example, wildlife photographers. Using an APS-C size sensor, you do benefit from the extra crop factor. For example, if you chuck a 100mm on an A6500, effectively, it's around 150mm, meaning you don't have to really carry around longer lenses to achieve longer focal lengths or really carry around a teleconverter to achieve the same result. In addition as well, if you are looking for a compact form factor, the APS-C size cameras are a lot smaller. In addition to that as well, you get a larger range of lens choice. Sony have a very good lineup of compact APS-C size lenses that will accompany you on your travels or basically your everyday life. Whereas in comparison to the full frame system, which uses a larger body as well as larger lenses, which may not be ideal for most people. However, if you are a avid landscape photographer, love your nighttime photography or astro work, or even portraiture, then going full frame is a good investment. In addition as well, if you are a person that loves sitting behind a computer and playing around in post-production, then going full frame will give you the extra power and versatility that you will need to basically achieve what kind of photo you want. In conclusion, putting these cameras side by side, Sony has done a good job with keeping the sensor technology up pretty high to make the APS-C size sensor up there with the full frame sensor. You're gonna get pretty good imagery anyway, as well as a compact form factor, which may be more attractive to the masses of photographers. However, if you are looking for that extra bit of power and versatility, then there is no reason not to invest in a full frame system from Sony, such as the brilliant A7 Mark III, or their larger cameras as well, such as the A9 and A7R III. If you have any questions on APS-C and full frame or want us to compare anything else photography related, pop them in the comments below. Make sure to follow us on our Facebook, Instagram and our blog, which links to those are in our description below, just to stay up to date with our latest events as well as what's going on in store. And as always, if you enjoy our video, hit the like button and the subscribe button so you don't miss out on our next update as we upload videos weekly.